Welcome to Victory Baptist Church tonight. Let's all grab a songbook, stand and turn to page number 359. Page 359. <coughs> Man, well, it's good to be in the Lord's house, amen, on this Sunday night. Good to see all of you here, and uh, thank the Lord for the good day that he gave us. Enjoyed the good lunch this afternoon, amen, it was good, and we appreciate everybody that was able to help out, appreciate the money that was raised for our young people toward a rise. I think they said it was 1050 bucks that came in this for lunch, and that was a blessing, amen, and uh, it was good to fellowship, good food, and uh, appreciate what the Lord did for us. But it's good to be here tonight. Let's get the ushers to come and receive our offering this evening. And uh, let's do uh, continue to pray for the many that are sick among the church, that God would touch them. We had several folks out traveling. And so let's remember them, that God would uh, watch over them, keep them safe, get them back home safely. And uh, just thank him for being so good. Amen. And remember our missionaries. Pray for them. Pray for our school here. And most of all, remember those in our families that are lost. God will deal with their hearts. And so let's just pray for the service tonight. Everything that's said and done. Amen. The Lord will be glorified. And so, Brother Rick, how about praying for the service and asking God to bless the offering?
right, let's all grab a songbook stand and turn to page 161. Page 161. Turn around and fellowship tonight. Amen. Appreciate that good singing by the congregation tonight. Uh, while uh, Patty and Rita are getting ready to come sing a couple of songs for us tonight, uh, make mention of a couple of things. Of course, next Saturday morning at 9 a.m., any of the ladies that are able to come and to help decorate for Pastor's Appreciation Day uh, at 9 a.m., that would be a blessing. So if you can do that. And then uh, next Sunday on the 22nd is Pastor Appreciation Day. And be a meal after the service, and uh, so we appreciate all that can help out by bringing uh, a covered dish or two and some desserts, 
And, of course, the, the church will be providing fried chicken. And uh, so we're looking forward to a great day. Amen. And uh, also, don't forget, on the 25th of October, there will be a hallelujah bash on that Wednesday night. And that will start at 6.30 going to 8.30. Everybody's invited. Invite your friends to come. And, uh, and if you can help out uh, by donating some candy, if you could bring that by next Sunday, that would be a, a great help as well. Then, of course, if you plan on going to Arise, uh, please let Spring know by the 29th so that we can get our registration <laughs> sent in uh, on the uh, early bird. And that way we can have some extra benefits when we get there. Amen. And uh, so that'll be good. And then, of course, on November the 3rd and the 4th, they're going to do a um, fundraiser volleyball tournament. And uh, so that should be interesting. <laughs> and uh, so <laughs> I'm not sure who all is playing, who all is going to play, well, how many teams there will be, but it'll be fun. Amen. But uh, so just uh, pray about that also. But it's good to see you. Pray for them as they sing tonight.
Appreciate that tonight. Amen. If you have your Bible tonight, turn to the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 21 tonight. Again, it's good to see all of you in the service this evening. Uh, trust that the Lord will help us for a few minutes tonight. Acts chapter number 21, and I want to begin reading in verse number 27. If you read through the first part of this chapter, you'll find that Paul made several different sailings to different places, and uh, of course he was warned about going to Jerusalem uh, because uh, they knew that there were those there that uh, wanted to uh, take his life, and there were several people out to do that, and, uh, but nevertheless Paul pressed on, and, and Paul never let up, even in spite of all the opposition that he faced during his ministry. And that's what we've got to learn how to do is just keep pressing on uh, regardless. Uh, and uh, regardless of what anybody else does, what anybody else says, if they're for you or if they're against you, uh, you just got to serve God anyway. And uh, that's what we've got to do. Amen. Just make up your mind uh, that you're going to follow God regardless. And uh, just trust the Lord to help you. Amen. And uh, in Acts chapter number 21 and verse number 27, the Bible says that when the seven days were almost ended, the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help. This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place, and further brought Greeks also into the temple and hath polluted this holy place. For they had seen before with him in the city of Trophimus an Ephesian whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came to the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them, and when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried one thing and some another among the multitude. And when they could not know the certainty of the tumult, he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And when he came upon the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people. For the multitude of the people followed after crying away with him. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee, who said, Canst thou speak Greek? Art not thou that Egyptian which before these days madest an uproar and ledest out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers? But Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, Our Father, tonight we are grateful for the opportunity again to open the Word of God. And Lord, tonight as we look at this portion of Scripture, Lord, that your Word would speak unto us and help us, Lord, in our lives. God, we thank you for those that 
stood for you in their day. Lord, for those that suffered greatly because of their faith in you, and yet, Lord, they continued on. And God, may here in our day, God, may we be bold enough to continue to stand and to serve you, Father, in spite of what may happen, in spite of the oppositions, and in spite of those that may mock. But, oh, God, may we tonight make up our mind to determine that we're going to stand for Jesus regardless. And, God, that you may encourage us to do so and strengthen us. And, Father, empower us by the Spirit of God. I want to do that, I pray, tonight. And, Lord, we'll thank you for all that's done, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I, I want to preach tonight from uh, these verses we read on the thought, the arrival uh, in Jerusalem. The arrival in Jerusalem. Now, looking at this passage of Scripture as we've read it, we see uh, the arrest of the Apostle Paul. But we also see the measure of the man who is seen in the midst of this dreadful circumstance. Uh, I believe tonight there are people that are probably somewhere around the world are going through similar circumstances like this because of their faith in Christ. I'm thankful that here in America, I, I don't really know anyone personally that has suffered very much for being a Christian. And I'm blessed, we're blessed, amen, to be able to live in a country so far that does not persecute us to this point uh, when, where we're living at. It may come a day that it may intensify toward the people of God and uh, when it does, and if it does, what are we going to do then? Are we going to cower down or are we going to stand up? Uh, regardless of what they say they may do to us. And so here uh, we see the measure of this man who is seen in the midst of this dreadful circumstance. Now, I, I may never get arrested for preaching the gospel. Uh, I may never have to face anything similar to what the Apostle Paul or others uh, down through the ages have faced. But I do need to learn the lesson of humility and uh, to be able to uh, just humble myself before God and whatever happens, uh, we know that uh, God's in full control. Amen. Now, from verse 27 on, Paul is a prisoner. His days as a free man are up. And from here on, he's a prisoner in various places. Now, Paul finds himself in an unusual situation. Paul knew how to take a negative situation and make it into a positive testimony. Amen. Uh, and that's where we need to look at things in a different light. Uh, and if we're not careful, we'll, we'll look on the downside of it instead of seeing what God can do in the situation that we're in. And uh, so Paul was able to take a negative situation and turn it into a positive thing, amen. Now Paul never viewed his situation as anything other than authored by God himself, amen. He never viewed his imprisonment as an imprisonment of man. If you read what Paul says over and over again, Paul would write, and he would say, I write unto you, uh, Paul, a, he didn't say, I'm a prisoner of Rome. But when Paul wrote, Paul said, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. Amen. Makes a big difference when you realize who's got in control. Paul knew it wasn't those of Rome that were in control of his life, but it was the God of heaven that had orchestrated everything that was happening in his life. Amen. And so he realized that, and he turned it into that type of situation. He was always a prisoner of Christ. And it was Christ, and he realized that it was Christ who allowed him to be in such a situation as he was in. I, I always remember Brother uh, Mullendore, when he would come and preach for us, there was something that he always said, that no matter what happens in our lives as God's people, it is first Father filtered. Amen. 
I mean, God never allows things to happen that doesn't come according to his and out of his control. And uh, so Paul realized that. Paul knew that. And uh, God was using it uh, for his honor, for his glory. Now, as you move through uh, chapter 21, we're reminded that Paul has arrived in Jerusalem. He's tried to accommodate the Jewish Christians. And the Jewish Christians there in Jerusalem had heard that he was against everything that had been the tradition of the Jewish life, but that was all a lie. I mean, it was not true what they were saying about the Apostle Paul. And so when he comes to Jerusalem, he is met by a mob of people. And uh, matter of fact, and here's the sad situation, a lot of them had no idea why they were against him. Only because somebody had stirred up the crowd and said some things, and then, of course, they got involved in it. The saddest thing I see in these days right now, with everything that's going on in Jerusalem, first of all, how in the world did all of those uh, Jewish-hating people get in this country. I see people marching that really have no business marching. Amen. Now, I believe in freedom of speech, but I don't think, I don't believe in hate speech. And they're spewing nothing but hate uh, toward the Jews. Amen. And, of course, that, that, that aggravates me. And, uh, but I, I don't know what I can do about it other than pray. Uh, but this country needs to get back on track. We've allowed so many people in this country that if we're not careful, our downfall is not going to come from without. Our downfall is going to come from within. And when the government that we have now starts talking about we need to limit our guns, that's they're the problem. And then if they want us to get rid of our guns, they're going to take us over. Well... You say, well, I, I'm not for that. Well, that's fine. You don't have to be for it. But when, the, when it hits, just come over to the house. I'll help defend you. <laughs> Amen. And, but here's Paul. He's met by a mob that is just, uh, they've gone into a frenzy, and they are trying to kill him. Amen. <laughs> the Bible said in verse number 30, look at that if you will. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. And this is what they were going to do in verse 31. And as they went about to kill him, they weren't trying to find out the truth. All they was going to do is kill him. That's what they wanted to do. And so first of all, we see the attack when he comes in to Jerusalem. Now, we see the culprits in this attack. Now, some Jews who were from Asia, when they saw Paul in the temple, they thought this would be their opportunity and that they could do something. And so when they saw him in the temple, they stirred up all the people. And, and of course, lies seemingly can stir uh, people to action quicker than the truth. People believe a lie before they believe the truth. And they don't even seek out the truth. They just take it for what it's worth, and, and they believe it, lock, stock, and barrel, but it's nothing but a pack of lies. And that's exactly what they were pushing upon these people, and they stirred up the people. And it's always easier to rouse people to fight for their religion than it is to live for it. <laughs> Amen. And we're seeing that play out every day the last week. And so the people that uh, were attacking were religious people. They were religious people. Matter of fact, they were very religious people. <laughs> Some of the meanest people in this world are religious people. I didn't say saved people. I said religious people. And that we have religious fanatics that uh, follow false religions, and those false religions doesn't 
try to save people, it destroys people. And that's what they were trying to do to the Apostle Paul. The Bible said clearly they were going to kill him. Amen. And uh, so they were very religious. So these were the culprits. Notice the charges in the attack. They said, this man that teacheth all men everywhere, they said that Paul was against the Jews. How could Paul be against the Jews? He was a Jew. Probably some of them didn't even know he was a Jew. Amen. Then they said that he was against the law of Moses. And they said that he was against Jerusalem. They said that he had brought Greeks into the temple and that he had polluted the holy place. These were the charges that they were trying to bring against him. And of course, in that day for a Gentile to enter into the temple, it, it was a terrible thing. Uh, the Gentiles could not go into the temple. They could only go to the outer court. And it became known as the court of the Gentiles. And so this is the attack that is taking place against the Apostle Paul. Can you imagine? Paul walks in Jerusalem, and all of a sudden this crowd that's been worked into hysteria uh, reach out to try to kill him. I mean, it's a mob. I mean, it's mob violence. And, uh, but then secondly, not only we see the attack, but then we see the arrest. Now, one thing that the Roman government wanted in its colonies and in its possessions was civil order. They, they wanted civil order. They didn't tolerate uh, civil disorder. Uh, they didn't tolerate it from the people. And any commander that allowed it to go on would be in trouble. And so as a result, they had observation towers to watch uh, what most of all the people were doing in the city. And, of course, they could watch what, what went on in terms of the congregating uh, that went on in the temple courtyard. And uh, there was at least a 1,000 men that were there uh, watching what was happening around the temple. Now, when the attack took place, we see the intervention of the soldiers. Look at verse 31. The Bible says they went about to kill him. Tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. I mean, it was pretty bad. I mean, they were, it was, <laughs> I mean, when you got to call in the army, things are bad. And they said that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. And so the soldiers looking down saw what was going on, and the soldiers came down bursting through the crowd. And when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, the people stopped off beating Paul. If they hadn't have stopped it, they would have beat Paul to death. They would have killed him. Brother Ray, they weren't there just to warn him. They were going to kill him. I mean, they had set their minds to put this man's life away. And so the soldiers came in. Of course, we know God uh, brought all of it together. And so they left off the beating of Paul. And then there's the incarceration by the soldiers. In verse number 32, the Bible said, who immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down unto them. And when they saw the chief captain, the soldiers, they left beating of Paul. And then the Bible said the chief captain came near and took him and commanded him to be bound with two chains, demanded who he was and what he had done. Isn't it amazing? And then they asked him, what, he, what has this man done? And the Bible said, verse 34, some cried one thing, some another among the multitude. And then he could there was so much different answers given he couldn't know for sure what was going on. And uh, so he commanded him to be carried into the castle. And uh, so that's where we find Paul. He is being arrested, incarcerated, 
uh, by the soldiers to try to figure out what was going on. And so they assumed that this man had to be guilty of something, and he assumed that the crowd uh, wouldn't do this unless Paul was guilty of some crime. And Paul wasn't guilty of anything. All Paul was guilty of was preaching the gospel. All Paul was guilty of was pointing people to Jesus and trying to preach the truth and try to get that crowd that was so religious to turn from their religion and turn to the Redeemer. Now, we see thirdly tonight the attitude. Now, it's amazing to me. <laughs> In all of this, Paul hasn't said anything. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't struggled. He hasn't fought back. Uh, I haven't read where he fought back. And uh, can you imagine that, that crowd as they were beating Paul? I mean, they were wanting to kill him, but yet Paul did nothing. And... Uh, and so he submitted his success to God. Now, when he first comes back in verses 19 and 20, he is given a report about his missionary tour. In verses 19 and 20, look at it if you will. And when he had saluted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, and they are all zealous of the law. Now, when Paul was giving his report of all that God was doing, Paul never said anything about it. It was him that had done anything. Amen. He never said, Look what I did. Uh, look what I have done. Not one time did he say anything about look what I've done. It was always look what God has done. Look what the Lord has done. Paul realized he was nothing more than a man that God had saved and God had ordained to preach the gospel, but it was God that had done the work. Amen. And so he submitted his success to God. It wasn't all about him. And I'm thankful that we can have that same humility no matter what God does. Uh, we must not ever be proud of anything we do because it's not us. Amen. It's not us. Uh, remember when Paul said that uh, it was Apollos that watered. He said, I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. God's the one that did the work. God's the one that can change the heart. God's the one that changes the lives. It wasn't Paul. It was God. And so he submitted his success to the Lord. All he wanted to do was glorify the Lord with his life. And so he submitted his success to God. He also submitted to God's servants. Now, God had given authority in the church to the elders. And when the elders said, Paul, uh, do this, he never said one word. He just did it. When they sent Paul and Barnabas out, what did they do? They went. Amen. I mean, friend, we just need to learn to be obedient to the Lord in all of our ways. And then Paul, I guess this is probably the hardest thing that we would ever uh, have to learn. He submitted to suffering. I don't know anybody in this building tonight that would like to suffer. How many of us would volunteer? I doubt, by, I doubt any of us would volunteer. I don't like suffering, do you? Uh, but Paul submitted himself to suffering. And that's what humility does. Humility submits themselves to God. Not only does humility submit yourself to God, but you submit yourselves to others. And you submit yourself to God's will. Even though it may involve suffering at the hands of those that are against you. And that's exactly what Paul 
had done several times in his ministry. I mean, how many times had Paul uh, been abused and, and mistreated for just simply following the will of God for his life? Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if he just get saved and serve God and, and never have another problem? Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> but when you become a child of God, then you are an enemy of the devil. Amen. And he's going to set himself against you at every opportunity to try to stop you from serving God. But yet Paul submitted himself to the Lord. And so we can see here the attack of the mob against Paul and the arrest of Paul by the Roman soldiers. But yet we also see the attitude of Paul. Never one time did he rebuke them. Uh, never one time did he say, don't you know who I am? I'm the Apostle Paul. No. Uh, they didn't have no idea who he was. Amen. And, uh, and Paul's experience, I think, can teach us some things tonight. I, I say, first of all, that Paul's experience can teach us that tribulations and trials are inescapable. You're going to have problems. I know Joel Osteen don't preach this. But you're going to have problems. You ain't going to get to smile every day of your life. <laughs> Amen. You're going to encounter trouble. And so we can learn from Paul's experience that tribulation and trials are inescapable of God's people. And then the second thing we can learn is that the reason for them is often unpredictable. Why? I don't know. I wish that every person over the last 40-some years that came to me and said, why, that I could have gave them an answer. I don't know why. I don't know that part of the mind of God and what he's doing in people. I don't know that. There's a lot of things that, we don't understand why God allowed these things to happen in people's lives. There's been many things down through the years that even just puzzled my mind, Brother Chris, why? What was the purpose of all that? I remember several years ago we had, a, we had two little girls that came to our church. One was eight and one was five. And the little eight-year-old girl, she had had cancer, and she'd, they had replaced her eye with a glass eye. Sweetest little old girls you ever seen in your life, Brother Jack. Never harmed anybody, never done nothing to nobody. And yet one night, both of them died in a fire, in a house fire. Friend, you don't think that didn't trouble me? Trouble our church family? Brother Ray, to this day, I don't have a clue why God would allow something like that. I don't know. Brother Mark, I, I don't know. And often the reason for things that happen, trouble and tribulation, is often unpredictable. We do not know or understand. Amen. And oh, that was one of the hardest funerals I ever preached in my life. And they buried those two little girls in the same coffin. Broke my heart. I couldn't hardly get through the service. And there's been other things that have happened. And I, down through the years, I'm like, why? It's unpredictable. We don't understand everything. Uh, when we get to heaven, I believe we'll understand it all by and by. And we'll know the whys and the wherefores. And, and when we get there, praise God, all of the perfect plan of God will be unveiled to his people. But we learn something from Paul's ordeal. Tribulation and trials are inescapable. The reason for them is unpredictable. If you'd have told me that night that that would have happened, I'd said, that's crazy. It's awful. Other things down through the years. You probably know of incidences happened 
uh, in your life or lives of people that you know, and you just, it's just, you just never know. But our reaction to it need not to be questionable. I, I know Paul gets to Jerusalem. Paul has been faithful. Paul has followed God. Paul has preached. Paul has seen people saved. God has opened the door to the Gentiles. And I mean, things are moving. And yet now here at the end, Paul is arrested. Paul is almost beat to death in Jerusalem. And Paul, as we read these verses and as we read these verses tonight, I never find one time where Paul did anything to fight back, anything that he would do to rebuke the soldiers. And then when the soldiers, if you look at it, verse 37, as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, here's the humility, may I speak unto thee? I mean, he's being, he's chained. He's being carried by the soldiers. And he says, may I speak unto thee? And the, the chief captain said, canst thou speak Greek? And the chief captain said, aren't you an Egyptian? Aren't you that guy that came here a few, uh, a while back and got 4,000 bunch of murderers together? And, and Paul said, I mean, they, they didn't even know who he was. They were accusing him of being somebody that he wasn't. But yet Paul, look at verse 39. Paul said, I'm a man which is, am a Jew of Tarsus. He said, I'm a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, that word beseech means beg. Would you please let me suffer me to speak to the people? I can hear the humility in this man's life. Uh, even in this particular situation. And when he had given him license, he told Paul that he could speak. Of course, chapter 22, we'll, Lord willing, we'll look at it and find what Paul is saying to all the people there. But beloved, tonight we can learn some things from Paul. Even though he faced great opposition, He still maintained his faith and his integrity before the Lord. And you and I tonight, I don't know what we may have to face in these days. I, I pray that the Lord would just come, some, come quickly. Uh, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if he came tonight. I would be sad for those that have not gotten saved, that have rejected Christ, that will be left behind. But many, many times God has dealt with a lot of people and they keep rejecting him. But one day Jesus is going to come. And with all the events that are taking place right now in the Middle East, it would not surprise me in the least if he came at any moment. Amen. I was watching them describe Israel and Israel's a little country, then they got that little, the Gaza Strip, just a, just a smidgen of a piece of land. And they're all fighting there, but then you got the enemies to the north, enemies to the east. They're surrounded. And at any moment, all of those countries, Iran is not that far away. And I'm afraid, Brother Mark, if they all start moving toward Israel, God may just open the windows of heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. And so tonight, we just need to be ready. Let's serve God now. Let's live for God right now in this day that we've got with the freedoms we have without being persecuted so much right now. Let's do all that we can for the glory of God. And speak out, amen, and speak up for Jesus. Father, I thank you tonight. Lord, I thank you for the word of God.